no problem. Uh, greetings. Uh, so glad that all of you could come and and uh, be here for my dad's homecoming. And uh, we're very appreciative of dad and the life that he lived. So why don't we start out? We got a lot to do today. So why don't we start out? And why don't we bow our heads in prayer today? Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We're grateful for our relationship with you. We're grateful that we can be here today to celebrate dad's homecoming to be with you in heaven jesus we are nothing and we know nothing apart from you and your great name and lord we ask you today that you would touch our hearts you would touch our minds lord that your angels would be in this building today you would lead us and guide us and protect us let your angels be with our minds and our hearts today cover us with your precious blood today in your precious name Amen. We're going to play some songs that Dad wrote uh, today. And uh, Dad was a songwriter. And one of my fondest memories of Dad was always him writing a song and playing the guitar. So we're going to play one of his songs now. Heaven 
her God up above Cause I didn't know God made children that tall Now it's been a long time Since that cold night When a small paper boy Stood tall for what's right I'll always remember The boy on the street Selling his papers out there on the street I'll always remember The boy that stood tall A selling his pig Out there on the street Hello, I'm Harrison Cornell, son-in-law of Henry Calvert As we come today to celebrate his life. <laughs> Henry Calvert at the age of 90 died the 9th of September at the Veterans Memorial Hospital in Oklahoma City of natural causes. His final resting place will be at Lena Cemetery next to where his parents and family members are buried. Mr. Calvert was born a twin on December 25, 1930 in Lena, Oklahoma, but the twin did not survive birth. His parents, Floyd Calvert and Maud Bullard, raised him in the small town of Lena. He was an energetic high school boy who, after eighth grade, became a self-taught man. He joined the United States Air Force in 1950 and was honorably discharged in 1954. He worked many years in an airplane, as an airplane mechanic at Tinker Air Force Base. He built himself a house and later became an entrepreneur and businessman known for the hubcap world in Oklahoma City. He was married to Evelyn Bidwell between 1955 and 1986. There's a little correction there on the down. And from this marriage had four children, Rocky, Sandy, Susie, Suzanne, and Marianne, and his son, Mark McPhillan. He was married in 2012 to Sandra K. Hullen, where they attended Midwest City Church of Christ. Henry is survived by his wife, Sandra K. Calvert, his children, Rocky Glenn Calvert, Marianne Johnson Cornell, Sandy Susie Mullins, Suzanne Eve Calvert, and Mark McPhillan. His grandchildren, Jeremy Wayne Johnson, Benjamin Lee Johnson, Jessica Mullins Lane, Andrew Calvert, Jacob Calvert, and Victoria Calvert, and his great-grandchildren, Allison Calvert, Samuel Calvert, Colton Johnson, Madison Johnson, Michael Johnson, June McElroy, Caitlin Galindo, and his great-great-grandchildren, Jason, Alexandra, McElroy, and little Jorge, Jorge Lee Galindo, which is actually, he, they've dedicated his name to Henry now, uh, coming soon. Henry is preceded in death by his parents, Floyd and Maud Calvert, his sisters, Bessie, Mary, Clara, Ethel, Pearl, and his little brother, Harold Calvert, and grandchildren, Christopher Michael Calvert. So Henry Calvert was 10 years younger than my father and came from the great generation that believed in making something of themselves, having strong worth ethics that you work hard as God given. You take care of your business and good things will follow when you put your mind to business. He built his own house, establishing many businesses in Oklahoma, including Hubcap World. He was an OU Sooner fan. I would sometimes mow his yard or climb the tall 30-foot ladder to repair the wind-damaged Hubcap World street sign. I don't care for heights, I told him, but he assured me he trusted me with this sign. He was very intelligent and a jokester with words and stories. When I married his beautiful daughter, Mary Ann, 
he would remind me not only did I owe him a horse, but he did not want to sway back. He believed in being a provider for his family and had a deep love for his children, which made him proud, yet at times worried. Fathers want their children to grow in good health and become productive, good people. He was not one to complain about his own health, saying, I've never been sick in my whole life. He wasn't one who would allow you to help him down a flight of stairs, pulling away, saying, what are you doing? I got it. And I did get it. <laughs> At 87 on Christmas Day, he had a beautiful monument headstone made for his parents. It was the last great contribution to his mom and dad, which filled his heart with joy. In the video, you see him smiling, and that's what he was talking about in the video when he was smiling and everything because it filled him with such joy of doing this for his parents. We talked of Western movies, Hollywood actors, musicians, God and Jesus, and Henry would reflect on his heart about goodness, God's interventions in his life, and the importance of attending church. And even in the last days, he found importance in getting up and taking his walks in the morning, greeting the new day, and wondering what the day would bring. And now, today brought heaven. After seeing him the night before, he passed away the next afternoon, and he'd be glad to know I was mowing at the time, taking care of business. God bless you, Henry, good-hearted man, a good buddy, love you. You're in heaven where you ought to be. to talk a little bit about my daddy. Um, I don't know if y'all can see my bright pink shoes. There's a reason I'm wearing these. Um, we, um, we were going to practice um, for a dance deal, a performance that we were doing, and we had got some bad news on my father before we left the house. So a lady there, she says, why are you wearing those shoes? I said, I'm wearing the shoes to keep from crying because when I look at these shoes, they're bright, so I won't be crying over my father. So anyway, that's my story of my bright big shoes. If you see me wearing them, I'm thinking about my daddy. Um, to start with, uh, um, very fun, I'm, just, I'm gonna share some funny stories, and I had pages upon pages. I could talk about my dad forever, but we don't have all day today. But to start with, to my dad, um, was found one day. This lady pulls over. He's actually decided to take a nap out here in this yard. <laughs> he just he was going to Brahms and he comes back and he says, this is a good place to rest. And uh, so you're sleeping out here and I'm sure people were thinking there's a body at a funeral home. You know, <laughs> why is there a body laying out in the funeral home? But uh, and that's just, that was just my daddy. And um, a lady saved him and brought him home. Um, just daddy. That's what he said every time he'd leave a message on my phone. was it's just daddy, honey, it's just daddy. Um, and he expected you to pick up the phone right away. I don't care what you were doing, you were supposed to pick up your phone. <laughs> if you didn't pick up your phone, that was bad. Why didn't you pick up my phone call? Well, dad, I wasn't by my phone right then. And Dad loved church and football, and I'm not sure in which order. But he said you should go to church because that's what the good book says. And uh, then one thing uh, he was famous for saying, especially to his wife sometimes, or different ones, oh, good grief, I'm telling the story. I'm telling it the way I see it. <laughs> and uh, Daddy asked, asked me once when uh, I was over at his house, he says, well, there's Baptist hospitals out there. Why aren't there Church of Christ hospitals? I said, I don't know, Daddy. <laughs> I don't know. And another Daddy thing that Daddy's real famous for saying that I never really understood was that thing was worse than nine kinds of hell. I don't know what nine kinds of hell is. But <laughs> evidently that's just pretty bad, you know, when he was saying that. <clears throat> I asked Dad about what his medical diagnosis was on his heart condition. He says, Mary, it just stops beating now and then and I just have to wind it back up. I went, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. He never went to talk about his health or about him dying. 
And uh, he would tell me when a lot of these medical issues started, he said, uh, he says, oh, good grief. You see all these movie stars, all these movie stars we know out here? He says, they're all dead. They're not here. Everybody's got to die one day. So I was thinking, Daddy, that doesn't make it any easier, but thank you for trying to make me feel good about this. And um, at one point, he was talking to a family member that was giving him a hard time. And uh, he told her that she was being so bad that the devil didn't want her. And uh, if he didn't straighten up, he was going to beat the hell out of her. And that was going to be a lot of beating. And when I heard this, I had to share it because I thought that, that was just funny. Because that was just daddy. Um, he, di he didn't laugh at all about expressing his feelings. You didn't have to worry about him holding things in. That, that wasn't going to happen. If he, had, if he felt something, he let you know. And um, I used to bring Daddy to dances. And he would whisper to me, Now, don't let anyone know that you're my daughter. <laughs> you know? Everybody would think he came in with this, this hot young chick. And, and uh, I was like, Okay, Daddy, I won't tell him I'm your daughter. <laughs> That's just, that was just Daddy. That was just Daddy. And, uh, um, and so today, um, he's dancing. He was a very good dancer, and he's dancing in heaven today. So, thank you. a few things about my dad before we go to a few scriptures. Uh, dad was a good businessman. He was an honest man. We didn't always see eye to eye as uh, a lot of fathers and sons do not. And I now, I have two sons and we don't see eye to eye that much either. But uh, dad always wanted the best for me and the other children. A um, couple stories to share with you about dad, I think that are kind of funny. And I've, I've quoted some uh, quotes from dad. I think some of that's uh, already kind of been generated about, around the internet. But uh, when we were at the shop, we were robbed at gunpoint and I had a gun sticking in my head. And uh, me and dad were both standing together with, with guns on us. And uh, the thief asked for all of our money. And so we, we gave him our, our money. But when dad gave the thief with the gun his wallet, he said, you can have the money. But he said, please don't take my wallet. It has my driver's license in it and it's very complicated to get it replaced. And I looked over at my dad and I said, shut up. <laughs> there was a loaded gun and it's clicked in the barrel. Dad said, no, I, it's, this is important. <laughs> so I'm standing there with a gun to my head and my dad is arguing <laughs> with the thief, do not take my license. <laughs> That conversation was ended when he said, Jack, you ain't getting nothing back. So uh, that was my dad. <laughs> um, things I learned from dad, if you made a million dollars and you owe a million, you're still broke. Don't steal, cheat, and lie. Be honest and tell the truth now instead of later. These things were preached to me like a preacher to a congregation uh, growing up. One day, I guess I was 12 years old and I didn't go to ball games or anything. Dad took me to coffee shops and truck stops <laughs> growing up and he took me to Vegas to the crap tables. And uh, 
So I walked into a truck stop one day and the candy machine was broke. And there was there was candy sitting there. So I, I went and reported that the candy machine was broke to the manager. Oh, he thought heaven had came down. Mm. For the next two years, all I heard was my son is honest and he did not steal candy at the broke candy machine. <laughs> I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but to him, integrity, honesty meant everything about everybody. Uh, if you're wrong, admit it. Okay. That seems easy, but maybe not always easy for everybody, but this is something he always preached. <clears throat> I haven't lived by the next one, but he did. Keep the first dollar you ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and he did, right? Right. Uh, this would sound familiar to all of us kids. Learn to live within your means. <laughs> Don't know that I've always did that too, but you know, that's that's dad and especially the the generation that he grew up in. And we should still live by that quote. This is another big one that I heard all my life. Don't try to be a big shot. People like humble people. Nobody likes a wise guy. I heard that a lot growing up. Uh, this has been mentioned a few times. Uh, he was never sick a day in his life, even though he had cancer. But dad was a very positive guy, and for sure, the glass was always half full, no matter what. You should judge a book by its cover until the cover of that book changes. So dad had a way of uh, saying things, and uh, there's many, many things that I, argued with about dad especially when i started my own business that was kind of underneath him and dad would tell me different things about people and and uh, he would tell me about my employees that was working for me and and their bad traits it, it took me several years to to notice that he actually was right about those individuals that he discovered in in two minutes what it took me three or four years to discover and so I don't know if I told him totally 100% that he was right about some of those things, but uh, he was. This was a big one for dad. Be on time or be early, but never be late. Mary missed that one growing up. But, <laughs> but, uh, uh, this was huge for my dad. Buy red cars. Sandy, I know he said you have a red car too, so I'm sure he helped pick that out. Uh, be a good person. That was always, always preached. Be a good person. Look deep into what people are doing, not what people are saying. Quite wise, right? I'm going to take a couple of things in the Word of God today out of the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 21. The two things I would like to deal with, the Lord has given or gave, and the Lord has taken away. Job 1, 21, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The word for gave is nathon in Hebrew, and it means to deliver, to set, to grant, to suffer, to appoint, to dedicate, to commit, to entrust, to be granted, to be made, or to be permitted. 
your life and my life is not in your hands. You're being permitted a certain space and time. You've been granted permission a certain space and time by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. During that time on earth that we have been allotted to be here, we have been granted permission to do what? To find gold, riches. Job said naked, I came out of my mother's womb and naked, I'm going back. We're not gonna take anything with us but our relationship with Jesus Christ. So we have been granted permission Nothing excited me more. Dad did not go to church with us kids growing up. And I became a minister at the age of 32. I've now been a pastor for 25 years. And there was always one dream that I always had. And that, that our daddy would come to know Jesus Christ as his personal savior. And so we have on the fourth row back here, his friends and family from the uh, Church of Christ. Is that the Church of Christ? Is that right? And uh, many ministers are sitting here on the fourth row. And I think when Sandra and we, uh, real close to Sandra, and we appreciate she's taking care of dad for the last 10 years, 11 years, or something like that. So she has been an angel from heaven to take care of my father. But uh, she told me that uh, we're going to church. And I almost lost it. <laughs> uh, he never went to church. But all of a sudden, so I didn't really know the story of this. So I got a chance to spend a couple hours with my dad uh, a couple weeks ago before he was sent to the hospital. We came down about two weeks ago. And uh, so I was in his room spending a couple hours with him. A talking and so he told me that God appeared to him in a vision I guess at 2 a.m. in the morning or something like that and uh, the Lord spoke and said Henry go to church <laughs> and uh, he said now you you need to just go to church and so I think this command was given two or three times to him and he said okay I'm going to church that's how he met y'all. So, uh, wow. So very, very uh, grateful uh, for that. And then, because of COVID-19 and the things that happened, we had to go to live stream in our church. And so, my dad, until his, his hearing got worse and worse, got to hear his son preach many sermons. So, I... I was uh, always, that was such a blessing to me. So God gave in his sweet, generous nature. The Lord gave my dad a few extra years upon this earth. But I know what the extra years before were for. They were an answer to prayer. That the Lord, that, that daddy would find Jesus in the way that he needed to later in life. What an answer to prayer that was. But how gracious was the Lord to set all that up for Dad, that he got an opportunity. And then I know that uh, my sister Mary got to be with him and Susie there at night. And um, I preached Jesus really hard to him. I, as a matter of fact, I think he got kind of mad at me for uh, uh, there towards the end. And he said, I said, you do have Jesus in your heart. And he goes, yeah, how about you? I said, well, I said yes, I do. I want to make sure. Oh. I don't know what that was. <laughs> so I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to make sure that, that we had that, that set straight. And, and uh, so, uh, you know, my dad... Uh, we, uh, he, he set me straight on a couple of things before he, before he passed away. And of course, me and my wife would be tickled about that. But uh, Dad was a very point blank uh, type of person for sure. Uh, the text here uh, from Joe, uh, 
uh, talks about a man that was well acquainted with grief. And if you don't know the story about Job in the Bible, I'm sure you ministers do, but uh, Job lost his kids, his possessions, and his wealth all in one day. He lost everything that he had. And his wife was encouraging Job to curse God and die. And Job said the greatest words that have ever been spoken, the Lord hath given and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed. That means happy be the name of the Lord. Now one of the greatest things that we have to go through is when the Lord takes, and that is lakach in Hebrew, when he takes somebody from us. The Lord has given. And what is the greatest thing that the Father has given all of us? He has given us his son to die on the cross. The Father gave, and the Father have taken away lakach. Job lost everything that there was to lose, but he spoke those great words, blessed be the name of the Lord. It's okay that you've given. My life has been a gift. And if you choose to take our life, it's still okay. Your, your name still needs to be blessed. And I thank God that I, I understand those things. Paul said to be present in the body is, is not to be with the Lord, but if I'm absent from the body, then I am with the Lord. So I am so grateful for that. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. My dad has fought a good fight. He remained positive all the way up until the end. And you've heard a couple, you've heard my sister say this. His wife, Sandra, can back me up on this. Even all the way up until he passed away uh, when I was at the house, he quoted us. A familiar story I've never been sick a day in my life what is all the fuss over and Sandra looked at him and she said well Henry you're ate up with cancer uh, you can't hear you can't see I don't know why you said it's so funny I wish I could have recorded it Sandra had a way of setting that straight she's probably one of the few people I've ever seen in life that could set the man straight <laughs> And uh, so she, she set him straight about everything that was wrong with him. And I couldn't even list all the things that she mentioned uh, to him. And he goes, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel bad. <laughs> so like I said, if anyone had a positive outlook on being ate up with cancer and uh, the disabilities of mostly being blind, the disabilities of, of being deaf. And I, I, told, uh, I told my wife, I said, it's not, you know, one of the last things I kind of wanted to, me and dad always had great arguments. That was like a, a, fa a favorite pastime. I could always look for two or three arguments a day with dad. And uh, so the last time he was kind of getting, getting on to me, it wasn't really no fun because he couldn't hear my rebuttal. <laughs> so he was like saying what he wanted to say. I, I can't. I can't say anything back. He can't hear me. It's not fair. It's not a fair <laughs> fight. So I, I'm going to kind of miss arguing with Dad, and and miss, and I'm going to miss Dad. And I woke up. Uh, you know, you never. You think you're ready for your your parents to die, and you think you're ready, um, even though you know they've lived a good long age of going on 91 years old, you think you're ready, but really there's just a part of you that leaves this earth when one of your parents pass away. So uh, I miss dad and I, I would miss talking to him on the phone. 
but I, one thing I am very, 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 very excited about is that I know where dad is. And on one side of the scales, and I know, I know that Sandra feels this way and uh, the kids feel this way. He's not in any pain anymore. He has been relieved of his duties on here on earth. Let me pray with you. Jesus, as we come to you today, we are grateful for the life that my father has lived. We are grateful that he found his relationship with you through the gift of life. And God, we would ask you, Lord, here today, Lord, that everyone in this building, that we understand the precious gift of life that you have given each and every one of us. And Lord, we pray today that your name would be magnified in our hearts and in our life. And Lord, that we learn to live for you in the fullest, to spend eternity with you. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your great sacrifice. Thank you for giving more than mankind can understand or that mankind can comprehend. Lord, be with us today. We trust in your name today, in your precious name. Amen.